Hello, I'm Carol Reynolds, and I'm here with the Dallas Winds, and I am totally excited because today I have an opportunity to visit with the person I would have called, looking at the top of his compositions and looking on the programs, Peter Meachin. Hello, and tell me what I would have said if I had known you personally and grown up around you and known how to say your name. <laughs> um, well, my, my name is pronounced Meachin with a hard sort of CH sound, which is a surname via uh, Scotland and Ireland. Yeah, most people know me as Meachin, and I never correct anyone because that's how it reads. It's a, it's a good attempt at making uh, the name right, and so uh, I'm kind of known as two different people. Well, now the piece that will be featured in the Dallas Winds concert, which is really all about trumpets, uh, this concert, um, it's not just some random piece, is it? And and people at the concert will be able to read the program notes and all of that. But for those who don't know about Song of Hope, can you just give us the background of it? I can. There's two backgrounds to it, really. But the background of it is essentially that um, when I lived back in England, I'd written a cornet concerto for a good friend of mine. Um, for those who don't know, a cornet is basically a conical bore uh, cornet. So it's, it's, it's kind of more related to the tuba than the trumpet, maybe. And, and it produces a very beautiful, mellow sound. And my friend who I wrote this concerto for was such a, a beautiful player of melodies. And, and I'd been uh, over in the States, I'd been at the Midwest Clinic, which uh, happens every December. And I'm sure many folks watching this will be aware of it, if not attended it. And uh, I got back and, and I basically had nothing to do on, I think it was the day after Christmas Day. And so I wrote this uh, middle movement that I'd kind of been hearing in my head a little bit on the plane on the way back. And so I kind of came up and I wrote this and it probably only took a day or two to, to go from nothing to everything, which is very, very quick for me and, and unusual. I'd got to know Ryan Anthony, who is a beautiful, wonderful human being, an incredible trumpet player. Uh, I first got to know him through one of the other trumpet players featured on the concert, Jens Lindemann, up in Banff, Alberta, here in Canada. We were chatting and, and he he related to my music that he'd, he'd heard and performed. Um, and he'd always ribbed me, though, saying, you know, it's always a bit miserable. You're such a happy guy. Why do you always write miserable music? I said, well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's the kind of relationship we have. It's a good one. I sent him through this little middle movement of the concerto. And he, as many people will know, has been going through a now seven-year battle with cancer. Everything to him is, is so utterly meaningful. And I got an email back from him after sending this through saying, hey, dude, here's a piece that's not miserable. And he wrote back a really beautiful email saying, Pete, I need you to change the last few measures so it's an optimistic ending. I need you to call it a song of hope, and I need it to be available with wind orchestra or brass ensemble or symphony orchestra and playable by one player or two players or three soloists. And so that became that piece because, you know, it's it's any chance to support uh, a friend should always be taken. And we're lucky to live in a world of music where we get to support through something very special. And so Song of Hope was was born and yeah, it kind of exists in lots of different forms. And uh, it's a very special piece, but it's, it's Ryan's piece, you know, every time it's played, I always think about uh, Ryan and how his courageous battle continues and and, and it's and music is such a big part of that for him. And so, you know, the more any of us can do to contribute to our friends' well-being, that's the least we can do, you know, and and the power of, of, of music is that it does change lives. And so uh, Ryan and I both received lots of emails about how other people have played it and it's meant a great deal. It's reminded them of somebody or it's had its healing powers. You know, it's made people feel better or people have been able to reflect on things. That's a, that's a, a long way from a guy who sat there on December 25th, 26th, just writing a piece not knowing what was ever going to become of it and and again that i guess is the beauty of of music we we do it and if we do it with as much integrity and honesty as we as we can you people buy into that people will always find uh, a path into that music you but never look for that sort of success you know you you just always stay close to your heart and hopefully you know people will find um, will find their own path for that music and find a place in their hearts for it.